This episode of North O2 is brought to you by Brilliant.org. Today on North O2, we are going to be talking about the amazing Norwal. The Norwal is famous for often sporting a large spiral tusk from their left canine. They are very unique animals who have gained fame for their strange characteristics. The name Norwal comes from the Old Norse word nar, meaning corpse, and wall, meaning whale. This is in reference to its pigmentation resembling a drowned sailor. It also may be due to their habit of lying still at or near the surface during the summer, and some have been mistaken for drowned men. Before we talk about how weird these animals were, let's talk about their evolution first. The Norwal belongs to the family Monodontidae. It is a family of medium-sized whales that have existed since at least the Miocene. They are distinguished by their melons, short snouts, and the absence of a true dorsal fin. Beluga whales are their closest living relatives. Although these two animals are classified as separate genera, they are miraculously able to interbreed on very rare occasions. A complete skull of a seemingly undiscovered whale was discovered in 1990. In 2019, through DNA analysis, it was found that it was a Norwal beluga hybrid. Both Norwals and Belugas are quite similar, excluding the tusk. Males excluding the tusk can range from 3.95 to 5.5 meters or 13 to 18 feet. Females are typically slightly smaller. Typical body weight for mature males ranges from 800 to 1600 kilograms or 1760 to 3530 pounds. Their pigmentation is a molted pattern with blackish markings over a white base. They do not have a dorsal fin, likely to swim under the ice easier and to reduce surface area for heat loss. The most famous characteristic and probably the only reason you have ever heard of them is their single long tusk. This tusk is a highly modified canine tooth. This tooth almost exclusively protrudes from the left side of the upper jaw and also has a left hand helix spiral. The tusk grows throughout life. It can be anywhere from 1.5 to 3.1 meters or 4.9 to 10.2 feet. It is hollow, though very strong, and weighs around 10 kilograms or 22 pounds. About 1 in 500 males actually possess two tusks. Only about 15% of females even grow tusks. There is only one known case of a female growing two tusks. The biological purpose of this tusk has long been speculated. It may be used as a weapon to punch breathing holes in the ice, for feeding, an acoustic organ, or perhaps for sexual display. The leading theory has long been that the tusk narrates a nonviolent hierarchical status on the basis of relative tusk size between males. However, this has come into question with the discovery that the tusk is highly sensitive and filled with millions of nerve endings. The rubbing of tusks between males may be to communicate about the environment and their travels. In 2016, drone videos of Norwal's surface feeding showed that the tusk was used to tap and stun small arctic cod, making them easier to catch for feeding. The tusk cannot serve a critical function for the animal's survival, however, as females, which generally do not have tusks, typically live longer than males. Therefore, the general scientific consensus is that the Norwal tusk is a sexual trait, much like the antlers of a stag, the mane of a lion, or the feathers of a peacock. The tusks are the only teeth that are visible. All of their other teeth are vestigial and lodged well beneath tissue. This means that all their prey is sucked down their throat whole. It is pretty mysterious how they manage to thrive despite not even retaining teeth. All of the energy that would have went to these teeth go to their tusks. This is but another example of how strange evolution can be. Norwals are found predominantly in the Atlantic and Russian areas of the Arctic Ocean. Most of the world's Norwals are concentrated in the Fjords and inlets of northern Canada and western Greenland. Norwals normally congregate in groups of about 5 to 10, and sometimes up to 20 individuals outside the summer. In the summer, several groups come together, forming larger aggregations that can contain 500 to over 1,000 individuals. Norwals seasonally migrate to preferred ice-free summer grounds. In the winter, they move offshore into deep water under thick packed ice. They surface to breathe in narrow fissures in the ice. Unfortunately, if they're not able to find access to air, 
many actually drown in the winter. Norwals have a relatively restricted and specialized diet. Their prey is predominantly composed of green halibut, polar and arctic cod, cuttlefish, shrimp, and armhook squid. Additional items found in the stomachs have included a wolffish, capelin, skate eggs, and sometimes even rocks, accidentally ingested when the whales feed near the bottom. Lacking teeth, Norwals are believed to feed by swimming towards prey until it is within close range and then sucking it in with considerable force into the mouth. When in their wintering waters, Norwals make some of the deepest dives recorded for a marine mammal, diving to at least 800 meters or 2,620 feet over 15 times a day. Many dives are much deeper, reaching 1,500 meters or 4,920 feet. These dives last around 25 minutes. Norwals are able to use sounds to navigate, communicate, and hunt for food. Norwals primarily vocalize through clicks, whistles, and knocks, created by air movement between chambers near the blowhole. These sounds are reflected off the soap in front of the skull and focused by the animal's melon. Norwals have a prominent melon capable of many noises. Echolocation clicks are primarily produced for prey detection and for locating obstacles at short distances. It is also possible that individual bangs are capable of disorienting or incapacitating prey, making them easier to hunt, but this has not been verified. They also emit tonal signals such as whistles and pulsed calls that are believed to have a communication function. The calls recorded from the same herd are more similar than the calls from different herds, suggesting the possibility of group or individual specific calls in norwals. Norwals mate in April or May when they are under the offshore packed ice. Gestation lasts for 14 months and calves are born in the summer of the following year. Only one offspring is produced averaging around 1.6 meters or 5.2 feet at birth. Like mentioned earlier, hybrids with belugas can be produced. A few have been documented, but it remains unknown if they could create viable offspring with each other or the other two species. These hybrids possess unusual dentition. The single remaining skull indicated that the hybrid hunted on the seabed like a walrus. This means it hunted different than either of its parent species. Really interesting to think that these hybrids lived their lives likely with no knowledge that they came from two different species. Norwals live on an average of up to 50 years, however, research suggests that Norwals can live to be as old as 115. Many Norwals die from suffocation, like mentioned earlier, and though the sea ice is declining due to climate change, this has not stopped this very common way of death. This is because the rapidly changing ice makes it hard for Norwals to get into a familiar migrational pattern. Other causes of death include polar bears. They mainly target the breathing holes of young Norwals. Killer whales are their main predators. They group together to overwhelm Norwal pods in shallow and closed bays. In some cases, they kill dozens of Norwals in a single attack. To avoid predation, they often hide under deep ice for prolonged periods of time. Humans hunt Norwals, often selling the skin, carved vertebrae, teeth, and tusk while eating the meat or feeding it to dogs. Hunts were very common in the 1900s, but have slowed down to mainly traditional hunts by the Inuit. In some places in Greenland, traditional hunting methods are used, and whales are harpooned from handmade kayaks. In other parts of Greenland and northern Canada, high-speed boats and hunting rifles are used. Norwals throughout history have been important to many cultures. To the Inuit, they were a food source and part of a legend where a woman was pulled into the water and the tusk was made of her twisted hair. Some medieval Europeans believed Norwal tusks to be the horns from the legendary unicorn. They considered these horns to have magical powers. Vikings and other northern traders were able to sell them for many times their weight in gold. During the 16th century, Queen Elizabeth I received a carved and bejeweled Norwal tusk worth 10,000 pounds of sterling. The 16th century equivalent cost of a castle approximately 2.5 million euros. European knowledge of the Tusk's origin developed gradually during the Age of Exploration as explorers and naturalists began to visit Arctic regions themselves. Since we are talking about Norwals, 
I figured it would be a good excuse to talk about one of my favorite civilian to the rescue stories. On November 29th, 2019, a man named Darren Frost attended a prison rehabilitation event at Fishmongers Hall in London. Another man among the guests was Usman Khan, a 28-year-old convicted terrorist. He launched an attack against the event with two knives taped to his hands. Mr. Frost heard screaming and came to investigate. He saw a victim bleeding and a commotion and decided he needed to step up and help. He knew he needed a weapon and ran towards the kitchen to find a knife. On the way to the kitchen, he saw something that perhaps would be more effective. Very long Norwal tusks on the wall. He ripped one off the wall and him and two other men held the terrorist at bay with a fire extinguisher, Norwal tusk, and a pike. The man yelled Allahu Akbar and then said he was going to kill them all while pointing towards a vest that he had on, implying it was a suicide vest. The three men were undeterred and replied, then what are you waiting for? The man said he was waiting for the police. They then threw some chairs at him, but then he ran onto the London Bridge. Once on the bridge, they cornered him and Mr. Frost stabbed him with a tusk. After a short clash, the man fell to the floor and was tackled by a man named Stephen Gallant. He pinned him to the floor and prevented him from doing anything with his hands. After a complex situation, he was tased and finally shot by police. The three men saved the day and were commenced with their tremendous bravery. Unfortunately, two bright Cambridge students were lost in the attack, three others injured. But if it weren't for a cetacean tusk and a few other items, more could have lost their lives. Well, that wraps up this video. Norwals are very unique animals. Even if they are long dead fossils, their strange morphology would still be interesting. Thankfully, they are still alive and are of least concern for the threat of extinction as of now. My goal on this channel has long been to educate the public about the world we live in. I often do this by talking about prehistory, giving you a good perspective. But a facet that I often leave out, and perhaps more importantly, is the laws that govern our universe. In order to get a much more firm grasp about our world, check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a problem-solving app and website with a hands-on approach. Take this lesson on fractions, for example. You might remember the rules about operations on fractions from school, but sometimes it's hard to visualize what's actually going on. This lesson helps you do just that. It's just one of over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. These courses can help you with school by giving you a solid understanding of various mathematical and scientific concepts. I think more importantly they allow you to see the world as it really is, a realm governed by various unseen physical laws. Classical mechanics, astrophysics, and special relativity are all things I am going to learn about. I am sure you too would enjoy expanding your knowledge on some of the topics they have courses on. To support the channel and further your understanding of these complex topics, go to brilliant.org forward slash north02 to sign up for free. The first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off their subscription. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Check out my Instagram and comment some video ideas down below. I make videos about history of humans, ancient animals, and the occasional full length documentary. If that sounds interesting, check out the over 100 videos I have made. Well, I'll see you on the next episode of North 02. See ya.